Thank you, Helen. And welcome everyone to our lab. It's a special day today, International Day of Peace. It's a good time to engage in the work with our nations. And also we are already in the aura of the equinox and almost in the new sign of Libra. So this is a very good time to practice standing in our center. And the quote from DK that Helen just uh, made us experience again it's from Glamour, the book Glamour, page 150 or 151, uh, which is such an able uh, expression of what is our function, the function that we have taken on as the Ajna center of our nation. Okay, our theme today is perfect poise in the now. <clears throat> to navigate ourselves in our present world conditions depends like never before on holding our inner center, our inner peace, inner balance. Being in a state of alert and relaxed at the same time. Walking, choosing the middle path, not being pulled by the opposites. This is already quite a tall order when thinking only in terms of our own life circumstances. But in the larger context, when we work with collectives, the scope becomes even much big, bigger, both in terms of complexity and voltage. Expose ourselves to these huge forces. We are told that the safest inner ground to stand on is a state of harmlessness. Let's sense this for a moment. What is a state of harmlessness? The Tibetan describes harmlessness as having three aspects. Perfect poise, a completed point of view, and divine understanding. Harmlessness is for most of us, <clears throat> for most of us not yet a stable state not something that we once achieve and then just live in it. Alas. It's more of a constant balancing act for us. We need to become proficient first in these three aspects. And by this then the state of harmlessness will gradually become stable in us. So let us today focus on the first aspect, perfect poise. And let's get a felt sense of this. Let's do a little exercise. Imagine that we are step on, stepping onto one end of a tightrope. Still holding onto something 
balancing ourselves on this tightrope. And all our senses sharpen. And as we prepare to walk, we very quickly notice that only the present moment has place on a tightrope. No past, no future. Let us practice this. Get our mind firmly grounded in the now. And now on our tightrope, let us feel into our solar plexus. We can feel it like a bag of water in the middle of our body. And it's clear that this needs to be kept still and centered, otherwise it will throw us off center. So let's play with this position for a moment. Also giving it the right consistency, not too loose and not too tight. Until it settles into some center space in us and become calm. So now we can start to walk. Let's imagine we take the first step, balancing us, looking not right and not left, and yet holding the whole situation in our awareness while our eyes stay focused on the goal. And every one of our movements and every impulse from the surroundings, we integrate and balance instantly without making a ripple. Okay. Good. And um, for most of us, this balancing act has now become a day to day challenge and opportunity. The uncertainty of our present condition on our planet is a perfect training ground for, you know, staying on top of it, keeping our feet light and concentrated. And our focus stays naturally inwards in our own inner center, in the core. At the same time, as we have practiced before, part of our task as part of the Ajna Center of our nation is to be silent watchers, which means yes to observe very attentively even the outer happenings. And this exposes us to many, yeah, many impulses, many news items, which bring up pain and fear in us and stirs up all kinds of reactions that often are so strong that they knock us right out of our center. So we need constant vigilance. First of all, 
to notice at all that we just fell off our tightrope, that we got out of balance. And then we need to develop a certain discipline once we notice it, to immediately stop first and restore our poise before we continue dealing with whatever threw us off center. We do this by just, just concentrating on, on our astral waters and not on the issue at hand. Lots of breathing. First of all, getting back into poise and only then deal again with the issue. And then from this poise, we can practice to remain in it more and more in the face of this trigger, whatever it is. And this is a, yeah, this is a transmuting process in which we clean out and disintegrate our fears or any other emotional reactions. So this is how we gradually can expand and stabilize our capacity to hold perfect poise. What is a big help in this process is to keep on the forefront of our consciousness a higher, more inclusive perspective, or as Asajoli calls it, a higher point of synthesis. Can we see this situation, whatever it is, from above, from the perspective of hierarchy? from a much larger time uh, scale. There is this uh, very strengthening passage on in the Destiny of the Nations, page 25, which is too long to, to read now, but uh, the Tibetan reminds us there that everything that is going on Everything is just temporary experiments of humanity and all of these experiments are needed, no matter how terrible. And the fruit, the fruit will be the awakening of humanity from its long sleep. And it's this what really matters, this awakening of consciousness and not what happens to the outer form. When we keep this higher perspective, then also it is easier for us to keep a measure of detachment and freedom, inner freedom from our own creations from our own opinions and interpretations, holding them lightly and not fiercely, which is a big challenge this fiery time now in our world. Trying not to defend and not to reject And just to, to stay supple and attentive in the flow, present to what is. Like Bruce Lee has this famous phrase, be water, my friend. Yeah, to be, to keep supple, to, and to keep the lines of communication open. So we avoid unnecessary waves. 
between us and the surroundings. It's a skill, it's an art. And once we have some proficiency in this art, in perfect poise, then we can start dealing with the second aspect of harmlessness, what DK calls a completed point of view. This includes the 360 degrees view, which we have already come to know, and also a skill to be developed, which is how to communicate what we see. And uh, we will go deeper into this completely added skill set, probably maybe in the next lab session already. But meanwhile, for today, the group from Australia has agreed to give it a try, sharing with us a snapshot of what is going on in the consciousness of their country at the moment. Okay, over to you, Rob. Thank you, Uta. This will be a brief scan of things which seem to bear on the work being attempted by the group in Australia. Like a photograph taken from inside a room looking out through a window, it sees only what is most immediate and pressing. It could be said that Australia is hard pressed by China and will be so for the foreseeable future. This is taking place in economic, psychological, political and military arenas and presents a significant test of national character. The practicalities are immense. They demand soul impression, great skill on the personal plane, and a degree of far-sightedness not required of this nation in several decades. The nation's survival in its present form may depend upon it. Our recent decision on nuclear-powered submarines has been highly provocative, though driven by a sense of strategic imperative. We are concerned for the damage caused in our relations, in our relations with France. This will heal. We grieve for Afghanistan and the harm we did. The whole nation sees there was a loss of moral compass in the manner of our withdrawal. A karmic debt has been occurred and we are uncertain how this is to be paid. On the issue of refugees, there remains a polarization between fear and welcome, between possession and conscience. On the issue of our First Nations, there is a karmic debt we struggle to address because we struggle to see it. On climate change, the people understand, especially in the cities. So does most of industry. But government is trapped in the formidable politics of multi-party office. In our obsession with COVID-19, some of our leaders have played on fear and indignation for the benefit of re-election. The pandemic has divided the states, each defending its borders, a personality divided among itself, a nation fortressed from the world. This too will heal. The path immediately ahead divides. One branch returns to itself, seeking a comfortable life. The other reaches higher. We will choose both. 
but this conflicted choice will exist only in the timing. The eventual outcome is inevitable. Australia is a middle ranking power standing culturally between Europe and North America, economically between Asia and the West, geographically between the Indian and the Pacific, and historically between the old world and the new. It faces an existential risk in the Indo-Pacific, but is not without strength and resolve. Our little esoteric group, now 10 members from four states, is encouraged and committed. Our primary task is the ascendance of soul impression. The task of the nation is to meet its role in the task of all nations. The soul and people of Australia are called by the soul and people of all nations. Thank you, Rob, for this synthetic scan. I hope, we hope that uh, we all will share, maybe each time in each lab session, another group can share a snapshot so that um, from their countries so that um, we gradually get to know each other and our countries and it will be helpful to enlarge our view towards a completed point of view of what's going on in our world. So, we will now have a meditation and it will contain a few opportunities to practice our skill of perfect poise. Today, we will start the meditation in the forest. We have thought when we prepared this meditation that uh, in the same way as the pinnacle for us has become like a symbol, a felt sense symbol for the Ajna center of our nation. So it seems that a tree could be a beautiful symbol for standing in perfect poise. So to be in the presence of trees may be a good, a good place to experience perfect poise. And further into the meditation, we will take a moment to spend with, uh, to just stand with the Australian group. Just hold a silent space for them. And at the end of the meditation, Rob for the Australian group will sound for us the great invocation, which will be followed by three OMS. And these OMS will be sounded mentally, not audibly. This is the way the Australian group does it in their own online meetings. So it will be a telepathic adventure for us to to try this out. And after the meditation, we will have time for sharing. So let us prepare now <clears throat> for meditation. <clears throat> 